Well, thank you so much for joining me, everybody. Welcome to my new moon video. Especially, I want to welcome any new subscribers to my channel. You are so welcome here. It is a delight to have you join my astro community here or our astro community. I'm not going to put any ownership on this. And all my old friends who've been with me for a long time now, thank you also for connecting here as well with me this week. This is the first of my new moon videos that I'm going to be doing every month for the new moon, telling us what to expect with the new moon. I'll also be doing a full moon video. These are going to be usually exclusively available to my Patreon subscribers and the links in the description below for that. Now I've gone to Patreon. Uh, I've been sort of debating this for quite a few months now, whether I would use Patreon or not. Um, I just have to say that with this little planet here, Saturn moving into the sign of Aquarius, ruling the internet next year, I just wanted to have all my bases covered in terms of where my products and my teaching um, are actually available to people. So if you like what I share with you and if you want more, more information about astrology, more information about the planets, more information about rituals and ceremonies and self, um, self-care, well-being, if you want discounts on my webinars, if you want discounts on my readings, then you need to check out my Patreon page. Also, top tier subscribers will get one of these as part of their subscription. And whoops. I know this has been very popular and that a lot of people like this little fellow. So if you were to subscribe to my Patreon page, this is available for the top tier subscribers who subscribe for a year. There are also other, I'll just pop him back there. There are also other gifts, other um, products that are available to the other tier subscribers as well. So if you are interested, do check out my Patreon page because I'd love to serve you further there as we head into a very interesting time, which will be the next two and a half to three years with Saturn in the sign of Aquarius. I'm not going to expand too much on just why I've gone down that road uh, according to Saturn in the sign of Aquarius. I might save that for a future video um, and weather report. But I wanted to give my YouTube followers a bit of a taste of what you can get through the Patreon um, channel each month. And so we're going to start by looking here with this video at the new moon in Leo. Now the new moon is occurring in Leo on the 19th of August here in Australia that for most other places in the world that will be on the 18th of August and it's happening here at 26 degrees of the sign of Leo. Now this is falling within two degrees of the fixed star Regulus. Regulus, I'll draw him on here, Regulus is a beautiful fixed star. He is at 28 degrees of Leo. So this new moon is falling in conjunction with Regulus. That's very exciting. We're going to talk about that. Not only that, but Mars will be at 24 degrees over here, 24 degrees of the sign of Aries, making a trine aspect to this new moon as well. So Mars is playing into this in a very beneficial way. And this is nice to see because there's been a lot of talk, um, including in my recent Astro Weather Report, there's been a lot of talk about how challenging Mars is for us in the next six months. But in this instance, there's a lot of benevolence going on between these two energies. Now, this is going to be very interesting because at the same time as we've got a trine between Mars and the new moon, we're also having what's called a B sextile triangle forming between the north node as well. So that's the energy that's playing out under this new moon and it's actually quite lovely. We're going to talk about what the B sextile triangle brings soon. But this is beautiful. However, for some people it could be the best new moon of the year. For other people it could spell disaster. So let's keep listening and see how it's going to affect us. First of all, New moons initiate something, they begin something, especially in a fire sign, which is very masculine energy, very initiatory kind of energy. It likes to take action, it likes to step up to the plate, it likes to create something and make something happen, fire energy. So this new moon is going to really initiate something very strongly. It's an energy of new beginnings, it's an energy of planting new seeds. 
to be uh, harvested at a later date actually. So it's a time for setting intentions. What do you want to grow? What do you want to uh, produce? And so when we plant seeds and make new intentions, we are setting things up for what may be able to be harvested at the next full moon, which will occur in, in um, about two weeks time on the Virgo Pisces axis. But also it will also, we will be able to harvest the intentions that are set now in six months time when we have a full moon in Leo. So we've got the new moon here now. In six months time, we will have a full moon in Leo when the sun is all the way around here in Aquarius, shining its light on the moon as it transits through Leo. Now for all of us, the time to set intentions is actually not under the new moon energy because the moon's invisible at that time. You want to do it sort of on the 20th. So on the 19th, we get the conjunction of the moon and the sun making a new moon. The moon's invisible. It can't be seen at that time. But by sort of around the 20th, and keep in mind, I'm giving you Australian times here, so it'll be around the 19th in other parts of the world. By the 20th, then the moon is going to move along into Virgo and just far enough away from the sun to become visible. That's the time to make your intentions. That's the time to lay out to the universe, okay, the next six months, I want to see this happen in my life. I'm going to work towards this. I would like to grow this in me. I would like to purify this in me. I want to work with this energy this month uh, and for the six months ahead. That's the time to do it around, in this case, the 20th in Australia and the 19th in the rest of the world. Um, that's the time to sort of set those intentions and plant those seeds for your life. Now for anyone who's into ceremony and astrological magic, this is a really good time to do ceremony around anything to do with the heart chakra. Leo rules the heart and anything that has to do with love and romance, which Leo also has a connection to as well. Now's the time to do a ceremony around that as well as to set intentions around those things also. One of the things that I hope to develop in the future as time goes along at my Patreon page is um, access to ceremonies and rituals that you can utilize as part of your journey. And because the energy of Leo is very upbeat and positive, it is a time under this new moon in Leo energy for setting intentions um, and focusing your, your actual intent on what you truly love, what gives you pleasure under this energy, and what gives you joy as well. So encompass all those things in what your intentions are. You know, I want, I intend to bring more joy into my life. I intend to create more love in my life and I'll do it by doing X, Y, Z, you know, do those sorts of things. Focus on joy, focus on love at this time. And specifically to Leo new moons, the calling is now to focus our intention on how we shine in the world, how we show up in the world and reveal our true authentic um, and very creative self. It's a time for looking at how we are expressing ourselves creatively. Are we being as creatively expressive as we are, have the capacity to? Or could we, could we improve in that area? Do we need to give more time into our life to, to use our creative capacity, to develop more hobbies and interests? Should we be focusing in that regard instead of it all being about work, work, work? You know what they say, all work and no fun leads to a very miserable life. So. How can we bring more emphasis to the pleasure and the joy and the creativity in our life? That's the calling, calling card or the hallmark of the new moon in the Leo sign. So I want to ask you a couple of questions along these lines that you might like to journal about at the time of the new moon and consider on. How proud of yourself are you? Are you proud of yourself? Could you be more proud of yourself? And in what ways do you need to take action to make you, you feel more proud of who you are? Leo is pride and not necessarily bad pride, you know, like pride goes before a fall and all that sort of thing. We all deserve to be proud of ourselves. We all deserve to have a sense of deservability in life. And so in what ways are you proud of yourself? In what ways could you improve the need to be proud of who you are? How do you need to change your life and make alterations to your life to feel more proud of the person that you are? Visualize yourself. I just encourage you to do this. And if you need to sort of, you know, do a little vision board around this, do it. Or if you need to do some journaling around this, do it. But visualize yourself as the king or the queen of your domain. 
what does that look like? If you are the queen of your domain, if you are the king of your domain, of your home, of your workplace, of your uh, friendship group, of your relationship, what does it look like to be the king and queen of your domain? This too is Leo energy because it calls us to be loved, it calls us to be appreciated, it calls us to shine and it also asks us to enable others to do that as well. Leo is actually a very giving and generous sign. And with this new moon, we're going to be looking at, well, how am I shining in the world? How am I being king or queen of my domain? And how can I help uplift others to be king and queen in their domain? How can I uplift others to be loved and appreciated for what they do as well? Love, appreciation, cherishing, honoring. These are all Leo words and all themes around this new moon time. This new moon energy can be a very positive start for something to do with your children. You know, maybe they'll start a new hobby or a new venture or a new sport or a new activity. Maybe they'll start some sort of a, a, a new uh, university degree or a new relationship or something. The new moon energy in Leo can indicate a positive start in something for a child. New Moon in Leo energy is also about taking time out to spoil ourselves. Leo, think of the lion that, that's lazing around in the African savanna, you know, and it's lying in the tree, just sort of swinging its paw in the breeze, or lazing around the grasses, you know, little little baby lions crawling all over it, playing and tumbling, and they're just mummy lions there going, eh, whatever. Um, spoiling yourself, being lazy, just enjoying the sun, you know, that's Leo energy too. Yes, there, is, there are times when the lions go on the prowl and on the attack, but for the most part, we observe them sort of lazing around. And it's not that Leo is a lazy energy per se, but it does like to be spoilt. So in what ways can you spoil yourself under this energy? What ways can you indulge yourself? What ways can you enjoy life and glamorize your life under new moon in Leo energy? Basically, the full moon in Leo is all about radical self-love. How do you need to adjust your life to make space for radical self-love in your experience? Now, as I pointed out, this new moon is conjunct the fixed star Regulus. And you've probably heard a lot about Regulus over the last few years because a certain very well-known politician happens to have this star very predominantly in their chart. So how is this fixed star Regulus going to be affecting how the new moon plays out in Leo? Well, Regulus is the star at the heart of the constellation of the lion. And it's considered to be a leadership star. You know, it gives positions high levels of power, high positions of power, and it can make people very wealthy as well. It's a very benevolent star in that in that sense. Um, Princess Diana had this star prominent in her chart, I'll just point out. Um, Winston Churchill also had this star very prominent in his chart. The current US president also has this star very predominant in his chart. Um, Jim Carrey, Barack Obama, Ariana Grande. I mean, I could list uh, like celebrity after celebrity after celebrity and well-known iconic figure who have been um, blessed to have this very benevolent star as a feature point in their chart in some way. So it does give a lot of um, power, it does give a lot of authority and it can give a lot of prosperity to people who have this in certain configurations. Now in Persia 3000 years ago, um, this or actually sorry, 3000 years BC, not 3000 years ago, so you know 5000 years ago in Persia, it was considered to be a royal star, one of the what they call the watchers, this one was the watcher of the north. And it was one of four archangel stars. It was correlated with certain archangels. These, these um, four stars had an archangel that was associated with them. So in that sense, in ancient Persia, it was a very special star. And any activity that occurred around this very special watcher of the north star um, would be something to be noted by the astrologers of the day. It would be something to sort of take on board and consider very seriously. Now, because of this, it has been associated, the, the Watcher of the North, Regulus, with the ascension and the death of kings and queens, heads of state. It's been associated with assassinations. It's been associated with uprisings. It's been associated with massacres. It is also connected to fluctuations of a, a big degree in, in currency and in the stock exchange. Um, it's connected to the Vatican, 
this star and it is also has um, ties to the European Union as well. So it's a very, as you can see, a hugely influential star. And in this year, 2020, of course, we need to really pay attention to what Regulus is doing um, across the board. And so to have a new moon on this very powerful star, it's going to, I'm very intrigued to see what unfolds because of this. So as I said, this star could be very very much a blessing for people who are wanting to rise up into leadership and power and wealth. Boom. You know, you might get that for some people on this day under this new moon on Regulus. For other people, maybe kings or queens and leaders and what have you, um, people who are wanting to start revolutions, it might not be so benevolent. So it's going to be fascinating to see how this new moon plays out. With a new moon falling on Regulus, we could well be in for very powerful new beginnings, actually, as a collective, you know. These could come as a result of any of these types of events that I have just mentioned. Um, keep your eye on the USA also as well. As I said, I'll just reiterate, people could come into their power, their affluence, their influence under this position, under, sorry, this new moon. Also, this might be particularly uh, seen for people who work with the occult. Um, they might rise into their, a place of power under this influence. Women might rise into a place of power under this influence and this new moon as well. Um, people who are in industries that involve speculation, so businesses that don't know from one week to the next what they're going to be earning and what they're going to receive that's a risky business a, a, like a a, a, um, a speculative business and so people who are involved in those things could also rise into prominence rise into uh, prosperity and leadership and wealth under this uh, new moon in Leo also so they're the people who are likely to receive the benefits of this star now again Back to what we were talking about a moment ago, there are some, there is potential for violence and disgrace and ruin that may come to people who are already in positions of power. These are the people, not everyone who's in a position of power, only if their chart denotes it, um, that, that um, Regulus is highly activated, that there might be some falls from grace that occur with this. So the rise, just to reiterate, the rise will be for people in a cult, um, industries or fields for women for people in speculative businesses and the fall is likely to be more associated for people who are already in positions of power they might come undone now like I said very very interesting times this new moon now this B sextile triangle what does that bring in essence a B sextile triangle always brings opportunities but we have to recognize the opportunity and we have to grab it if we're not looking for an opportunity if we've got our head in the sand ignoring everything that's going on around us the opportunity could fly by and there it's gone missed chance so this new opportunity that might present itself for a lot of people especially if you've got a planet at this point a significant planet or your rising degree or your midheaven at around between sort of 24 to 28 degrees of Leo you're going to feel this energy or even if you've got something sitting opposite at 28 degrees of Aquarius as well you guys are going to feel this energy most of all and for you people you need to be on the lookout for some sort of an opportunity that comes your way grab it make the most of it run with it don't be afraid jump in boots and all go for it because this energy is connecting to the north node destiny your destiny could be activated under this new moon energy not only that mars is saying take action now don't delay don't muck around jump on in go for it Let's start it. Let's start something. Let's initiate it. Two fire signs, Mars, Sun, Moon, North Node. Big potential for destiny to manifest for a lot of people now, provided they make the most of the opportunities that present themselves and the benevolent energy that is present under this, this, um, this configuration of a B-sextile triangle. Let's talk a little bit more about this angle here because it is very, very important. There will be increased competitiveness likely under this energy of the new moon as well. But the manifestation, the, the results, the, the, the tangible evidence of this competition is going to turn out to be generally positive under this. Um, we will have speedy and constructive reactions to any circumstances that arise. You know, we get the opportunity, we see it, jump, grab it, go. 
we will take action and it will result in in positivity so we can be um very protective of family under this energy as well because mars is is essentially trining the moon and getting a heavy activation of new moon so we can feel like being the warrior for family protective of family caring for family i'm going to sort of uh you know be there for you and i'm the hero and they shall not pass kind of thing um you know very uh very warrior protective like energy towards family our dreams and goals can actually be achieved under this energy quite suddenly also as well because we'll put a lot of enthusiasm into things. We'll put a lot of energy into things, into our new ventures and into our old ventures alike as well. So very powerful for activating something new in life, particularly something entrepreneurial because Mars is an entrepreneurial energy. Mars also rules um, real estate and the moon rules home. So you might get a new chance to activate an opportunity for a new home or potentially a renovation to an old home or in some way dealing with real estate that could be very positive and empowering for you and be part of whatever your destiny may happen to be. Maybe you have a destiny to own five Airbnb apartments or something like that and this is a chance to make uh, take action on that opportunity. Maybe your destiny is to sell your current house and, and sort of uh, downsize to something a bit more manageable so that you've got a bit of money in the bank. And you know, that could be activated under this energy as well. Desire and action come together now under the new moon trying to Mars. Desire and action meld, they unite, and you can make your desires manifest because you've got the, the action to give to make them happen. There's lots of initiative under Mars energy and there's lots of passion that comes with this is as well that can also be part of the, um, the energetic force behind things manifesting for you. Because of the influence of Regulus, there might be the chance to work with very um, powerful people at this time. You know, you might be contacted by someone in a in a high status in your particular field or your particular industry who might want to work with you or collaborate with you. Um, you might have sort of a you know, cross paths with someone very powerful, very influential. That can also happen. And this is also Mars squaring the new moon an aspect of success that can bring positivity into your life and success into your life. So, so much to look forward to for most of us with this placement. Um, of course, if you are in a position of very high level power and you have um, this um, planet, uh, this sorry, this fixed star Regulus in a prominent position in your chart, you might want to just make sure everything is safe and secure and well shored up. But most of the people who watch my videos will be looking at the positive aspects of this new moon. Very, very exciting times. So where does this new moon fall in your chart? Well, in this section of this reading, we're going to do a very quick spin. This is not going to, I'm not going to spend, you know, 10 minutes on each sign. This is a very quick spin to show where things are playing out. Let's start with Leo. Why don't you go first? Because you know, guys, you're the ones with a new moon this time around. So if you're, if you are Leo rising, then this energy is falling in your first house and you're going to get new opportunities for your journey in life, new opportunities to start something that helps you thrive in the world, survive in the world, that helps you show up and present to the world in a very dynamic way. New opportunities are coming your way for yourself, for your own journey in this body. Yay, exciting if you're Leo rising. If you are Virgo rising, the new moon is falling in your 12th house. This means new opportunities are coming to you with spirituality. New opportunities are coming to you with creativity. New opportunities are coming with you to perhaps travel to foreign places or uh, be involved in sort of higher level, higher dimensional experiences. Things that come from the divine, channeling the divine, connecting to the divine, even connecting to past lives. New opportunities that might be fruiting for you now out of your past life experiences. If you are a Libra rising person, the new moon energy is falling in your 11th house 
And so this is where you're going to get new opportunities, new opportunities to make new friendships, new acquaintances, join new groups, establish new dreams and goals for yourself, expand them out even further than where they've been in the past to increase and multiply your dreams and goals under this energy. New opportunities, grab them to fulfill your dreams and goals under this energy and even new opportunities to do something for humanity, some sort of humanitarian um, activism that you might be able to undertake. For Scorpio rising people, this energy of the new moon is falling in your 10th house. This means that new opportunities might come to you under this new moon and for the following you know, couple of weeks, falling in 10th house realms, maybe to do with a boss giving you a promotion or maybe some career opportunity or project landing in your lap. New opportunities that might come to you regarding creating a, a greater social status, a greater reputation in the world in some way also. If you are Sagittarius rising, there might be new opportunities for you that are unfolding in ninth house realms. An opportunity to study something new, an opportunity to immerse yourself in some sort of cultural experience, particularly other cultural experience, or an opportunity to learn some new belief system or immerse yourself in some new belief system. Maybe even an opportunity to bring some um, faith or belief into your home or domestic environment as well. Maybe some you know, religious artifacts that you can utilize in a little work worship altar in a corner of your house or um, you know more prayer more meditation more connection to spirit that happens in your home environment also under this new moon in your ninth house for those of us who are Capricorn rising this is putting the energy of the new moon in the eighth house this means for you guys that um, new opportunities will be coming to you in very mystical realms you know you might get a new opportunity to connect with a new astrologer or find a new reiki healer or do a past life regression uh, a new opportunity might arise in that realm for you that gives you um, just so much oomph for life and creates a new passion because eighth house is passion eighth house is where we feel very um, intensely about something so you might be uh, getting new opportunities to discover something that lights your fire that g's you up might be new opportunities in sex and sexual experience and and a chance to try something different in sex due to the new moon falling in the house of intimacy and deep intimate relationships for aquarius rising this new moon energy is falling in the seventh house for you guys there might be a new opportunity for a committed relationship a committed partnership there might be a new opportunity that arises with this new moon in some sort of contractual agreement maybe in a, in a business dynamic or maybe um, a chance because seventh house is very cultural a chance to experience some refined culture of some sort some glamorous culture maybe you get a chance to go to a concert or a sporting event or a, um, to to attend a play or something that's very um, high level uh, and, and enjoyable, you know, enjoyment of the arts in a new way that you might experience under this new moon energy also. If your Pisces rising, well, this new moon energy is falling in your sixth house, potentially new opportunities in work, in in um, what you do to make a living, maybe in, in um, something to do with health and well-being. You might get a new chance to start a new diet or discover a new, a new exercise routine or connect with some healer or some, some wisdom keeper in terms of the practical um, journey of the body because this is our practical service and our practical use. You might discover some form of new sacred work that you can offer the world that really excites you and thrills you as well. So you're going to get new opportunities that are to do mostly with your working life um, here. Perhaps for some Pisces people too, there might be new opportunities to heal and restore health and well-being as well in some area too, or finances maybe. Maybe there even might be new opportunities to settle a dispute or an argument or a conflict that may have been going on as well if you are Aries rising you're going to get new opportunities falling in your fifth house whoops get it right fifth house and so that's going to give you new opportunities to do with hobbies pleasures joys interests in life so something new might crop up and you were like oh I never thought I'd enjoy doing that but my goodness that's so much fun I'm going to do that all the time um, you might get new opportunities to connect with your children new opportunities to meet new lovers um, go on dates have some romance in some manner that might manifest for you if you are uh, Aries rising also if you are Taurus rising the new moon is falling in your fourth house and this means new opportunities around the home new opportunities maybe for a brand new property uh, 
to, to, to purchase a new property or to practice hospitality in a new way that you've never done before, new opportunities to connect with family, to connect with your mother or the maternal line or some family lineage in some way. New opportunities with transport, with properties, with farming, with home, with uh, like the bricks and mortar home you live in, or your domestic environment to re-establish something and set something up new in your domestic and family environment. For Gemini rising people, new opportunities are going to abound for you in third house realms. Maybe a new opportunity to write, so, write something, to communicate something, to teach something, new opportunities to woo, learn something. Maybe some new opportunity to start a small business as well might come your way under this energy because the third house is small business. A new opportunity to collaborate with an advertiser. Um, a new opportunity to do some marketing that you'd never explored before that might present itself for you that could be very, very exciting. For Cancer Rising, I'm going to conclude here. Thank you for sticking with me for the whiz around. Cancer Rising People is going to put Leo New Moon Energy in the second house. New opportunities could come your way with regard to making money, how you make money off your own instigations, off your own initiatives, how you, um, you know, create your own resources. There might be new opportunities there that you never imagined. And for Cancer Rising People, there might be new opportunities to develop a sense of self-love and self-worth at this time as well, especially from what I discussed in the intro to this video, how important self-love is at this time with the new moon in the sign of Leo. So thanks for joining me for this stay still there. <laughs> this new moon video, I, as I said, I will be doing this monthly for the new moon and monthly for the full moon. So every two weeks, essentially, if you subscribe to my Patreon channel, you will get this information regularly. And hopefully it is a blessing on your journey because that is my prayer that it helps uplift and support everybody on their journey through life. Thank you and God bless.